name of our most merciful and gracious God. Amen. This is an exciting day at St. Mark's as we welcome several new members into our faith community. Instead of saying members, we could say, we welcome you as ministers into our faith community, pursuing our mission to pray and worship God, proclaim the gospel, and promote justice, peace, and love. You are ministers of the church. The church catechism in the Book of Common Prayer says that ministers of the church are laypersons, bishops, priests, and deacons. But what is the ministry of laypersons? The Catechism says, represent Christ and his church, bear witness wherever they may be, carry on Christ's work of reconciliation in the world, and take their place in the life, worship, and governance of the church. That is a fine description of ministry. You may have your own. I will give you my description, which relates to three gentlemen who have been ministers to me in their own way. One is a Korean War veteran who works at the front of a local thrift store. He greets, smiles, and laughs with everyone who comes in and may tease you about the treasure you just purchased. By his presence, he brings smiles and joy to people. He builds up those he encounters, whether friend or stranger. And next time you walk in the store, you are no longer a stranger. The other man was a friend, Laren, who recently died at the age of 95. He and his daughters operated a popcorn shop in downtown St. Paul, close to where I worked, and accessible by Skyway. I would stop in every day and be greeted with a cheery smile, a nugget of wisdom, a question on how my day was going, and a strong handshake. He made everyone he met feel welcome and at home. Most important, Myron taught me how to pray. Each time before I left the shop, Myron would say, let's have a prayer. The first time he said that, I looked around the shop as if to say, you mean pray right here at the counter with all these people coming and going? Myron said, well sure, why not? So first he would say a strong and heartfelt prayer and then I would pray also and head back to work. What I learned from my room is the discipleship of prayer. That is a wonderful experience when people pray together. And don't worry about the words that are in your prayer or how it sounds. In prayer, simply rely on God and speak from the heart as my room did. There's another fellow I knew uh, named Richard. He and I graduated from high school together in Duluth and also worked for the same state agency for many years. He died last week. In posting remembrances of Richard on Facebook, one of our classmates said this, I remember Richard being one of my first friends in a genuine way when I started to in third grade. I had gone to a different school every year since kindergarten before then. I remember him inviting me to his house to play. I needed a friend. I don't recall any before starting in third grade, and maybe one. Richard befriended me, and I still remember that. He never lost those genuine qualities. I only saw him in passing moments over the years, but they were always with that warm greeting from him. My classmates remember it's Richard's kindness in third grade, inviting to be a friend when he needed one, obviously made a big impact on him, since he finally speaks of it 64 years later. Perhaps he learned from that experience in third grade that if someone is sad and lonely, you make friends with him or her as Jesus would have us do. There are many tasks of ministry involved in the church that are important. However, just as important for the ministries we have in our daily lives that witness to God's love among us. Just as our ministry in the church may be transforming, so our ministries beyond the church may result in little transformations of goodness that last a lifetime.
inside the body of Christ, and therefore make a wonderful variety of service in a faith community. How do we develop and use our gifts and talents to love God and our neighbors, to be seekers of justice and peace, and to be ministers of the church and trust in confidence rather than fear? I believe it is a journey of faith, a journey that began when you were marked as Christ's own and sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism. Discerning your gifts in ministry happens over time when a faith community nourishes you. What are some of the ways in which the faith community of St. Mark's nourishes us? We pray together. We worship God together. We use our reason and experience to understand the scriptures and deepen our faith in God. We listen to each other. We honor our stories. We laugh together. We cry together. We honor our elders and support our youth. We acknowledge our sins and seek forgiveness from God and from each other. We ask for prayers and healing times of need. We celebrate life in each other in all seasons. We participate in the sacraments of baptism and the Eucharist. We honor those who have died, the saints who have come before us. We send each other out into the world rejoicing in the goodness of God. One of the best ways to deepen our faith and develop our ministry is by connecting to small groups. There are many at St. Mark's for you to consider. I'd like to call one of them to your attention. It is a prayer shawl ministry. On the St. Mark's website, it says that they are a group of knitters who meet and knit shawls for people who are in need of extra prayers. All levels of And we welcome you to this sacred space and this 